Hi everyone, in this Clo video, I'm gonna show you about the pin tool. This is a tool that I really like to use a lot when I'm styling garments, um, but it's also just fun to play around with in Clo too. So to show you the basics of it, I'm just going to draw a rectangular piece of fabric right here in our 2D window by going to the rectangular tool, um, rectangular tool in our 2D toolbar. And we've got it right here. Of course, we know if I were to turn on simulation mode, it would just fall to the ground because it's not connected to anything. Um, but if I turn off simulation mode, um, then I'm going to go into my pin box tool, which is located here in the 3D window. Um, this is gonna be underneath your mesh select tool. So that's what yours is automatically going to look like. It's a dotted circle with a paintbrush next to it. But if you hold that down, we're gonna have the pin box and pin lasso. I'm gonna be showing you mostly about the pin box tool. So if we click on that, you'll see our fabric turns into a grid. So this is our particle distance right now. We're in low resolution mode, so our particle distance is further apart. That means there's less intersections and less triangles making up the fabric. But if I were to turn on high resolution mode, which I'll show you just for example, and you can find more about high resolution mode in my video all about it. You can see our particle distance gets much smaller and our fabric will become much more detailed when I turn on um, high resolution mode. But I'm gonna switch back to low resolution. Um, but when you're in the pin box tool, it's going to allow you to click on any of those intersections. So when you're in a high resolution mode, you have a lot more intersections of your particle distance that you could click on than others. But we can click on any intersection and it will apply a pin to it. So I'm clicking and I added a pin to both of those. Orange means it's selected and red means it's a pin. And if I turn on simulation mode again, it will fall and be pinned in the air in exactly that spot. I can click on these and move them around. Um, and also, if you're not seeing the pins, go to your garment display menu right here on top of your 3D window and choose show pins. Um, if you don't want to see your pins also you can click on that to turn them off too But if you're not seeing them, that's where they are If you want to add a pin easily you can always click on W on your keyboard and that will add a pin in those spots You can also click W on your keyboard to delete a pin at any time um, Without being in that pin box tool and so this is going to allow you to kind of move around your fabric um, in the air and keep it in one place versus just using our hand tool when we move it and it just falls right back. We can also add pins in our 2D window. So if I wanted to add one right to the corner of this and maybe to the other corner too, and delete this one up here, clicking W on my keyboard. Then I could adjust the fabric easily because I have both corners selected. Also, if you want to delete a pin, you don't have to use a W technique. You can always um, click on it. Let me add one right here in the middle. Click on it and click delete on your keyboard too. So that's kind of the basics of the pin tool. Um, you can also, instead of just adding one pin, you can click and drag. So I'll delete this one on the corner. And if I wanted to click and drag, it would add a grouping of pins that I could move around. So this is something that can be helpful um, if you wanted to potentially drape on top of your avatar, or if you wanted to create um, like a really drapey piece of fabric for something. Um, say I wanted to use this as like a backdrop in Clo or something like that. I could create it and get it looking exactly like I wanted. And then I could right click on it and I could choose freeze. And then if I have a garment hanging in front of it and I turn on simulation mode, it will stay there. So I'm just gonna put that off to the side and I'm going to go into my library and show you how we can use the pen tool to adjust a garment too. So I'm just gonna add in um, like that basic t-shirt that's in our clothes library. I'm just gonna add it to my workspace. So I have added that basic Clo t-shirt that's in our library under, under the garment folder and an avatar into our workspace. I'm gonna close my library now. And this 
um, t-shirt right here. It's already sewn together. That's how it is in our clothes library. So that's why I find it just really easy to be like the garment that you add to um, test out a tool with. So I'm gonna turn on simulation mode since it's already sewn together. And I'm just gonna do some quick editing to our pattern to just turn it into a dress with um, like some flowy fabric at the bottom because that will give us a little bit more to use the pin tool to pull around. So I'm just gonna delete these points at the side seam and then I'm just going to extend the length of the dress on the front and just to make it a little bit wider um, just so that we have some fabric to play around with so I can really show you like how we might use the pin tool. Um, so I'll do the same thing on the back. And just checking to make sure our side seams are close to the same length by clicking on the side seam. And I see the length here is 34.410. The back is 34.4111. So that's really close. So for this example, I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, but if you did have a very different length for your side seams and you wanted them to be the same because if they are different, your sewing is going to pucker because it's a different length sewn into a different length. You could always right click on one of those seams and choose change length and type in the distance or the length you wanted that one seam to be so that they could be the same. So then I'll turn on simulation mode. And because we did expand our pattern quite a bit, um, it looks like this is going to simulate okay eventually, but if yours is having problems, you could always just turn on arrangement points really quick by clicking shift F and that would give you your arrangement points right here that you could click on your pattern and arrange this pattern back to be reset. Um, if you are new to arrangement points, I'll link to my video explaining them here, um, but I'm just going to pull that out a little bit because we know we don't want those side seams to be overlapping and this is a wide pattern. So I'm just gonna click Shift F again to get rid of those and now we'll simulate again. So once that's simulated, I can um, add some pins to our garment, um, either by going back to that pin box tool, or I can do it by using the W on my keyboard to click anywhere and that would add a pin. Once I add it, then it will be there on the fabric and I can pull it around and move it. So this is something you could do if you wanted to style your garment in a certain way, um, like you wanted it to be sitting out from the avatar and you couldn't get that kind of volume on your garment or in your layers or anything like that, um, or really anything. Um, if you potentially wanted, um, let me delete these. Uh, maybe some styling details. For example, if my neckline was um, sitting higher than I wanted it to, I could always use this to kind of arrange the fabric and get it to sit differently than I wanted, higher or lower. Um, just an example, this neckline is sitting well, but if you wanted to adjust anything and keep it there, um, or to add in like a detail and see if you wanted to add like a gathering or something, you can just play around with it and kind of use it as like a draping tool if you were, as if you were draping on like a physical avatar, not in Clo. Um, so that's just some of the things that you can do with the pin tool. I'm um, using W on your keyboard to click and add or delete them or going into that pin box tool and using the, the um, particle distance to be able to click on those intersections. If you ever know that you have a pin and you can't find it somewhere, so say for example, this one gets like really lost in my fabric and I can't find it, I can always right click on um, any pin and I can click delete all pins. So I could either delete the selected pin or delete all pins. I can also attach the pin to the avatar or attach all pins to the avatar or detach. But I'm gonna delete all pins right now. And I'm just going to kind of show you what that could do. So for that example of um, 
we wanted the neckline to sit differently, for example, wouldn't really apply here, but just using it as an example, uh, maybe I wanted it to sit up a little higher or a little bit lower than it was naturally on the garment. Um, I can always right click on that and say, attach pin to avatar. And then it really is going to stay in that exact place on the avatar versus just being pinned kind of to the air because the pin is really only going to an air, well, only attaching to the air. Um, and so we also have our pin lasso tool where we can select a circular shape. Same thing with our flat fabric. Um, but the pin box tool lets you select a square shape or just a single point at a time on an intersection. I'm going to right click and delete all my pins for now. And then I'm also going to just show you an example of some things that you could do with some of this fabric that you've potentially draped like we have. Um, so we can always move it to the background and that could be a um, render background that we've created. Or if I had a smaller piece that I wanted to drape, so I'm just gonna add in a rectangular piece of fabric. I will add a pin up here to the top corner just to hold it in the air. And turn on simulation to get that to fall and drape. And once it drapes for a second, I'll turn off simulation mode and I can just gonna go freeze it. And this is something that I could use um, if I wanted to attach like a different piece of fabric to the front of my garment and I wanted it to be draped. Um, you can use the tack tool for something like this, which I'll go over in a different video. Um, but I personally just find the pin tool a little bit easier to control, but I could bring it up to my garment really close and kind of play around with where I wanted it to sit. Until I'm happy with that placement. And you could just use this as like a, um, a draping test or um, just kind of playing around to see if you even like the design. And then once, if you are happy with it, we can always click on the part of our garment where we want it to attach. And that will give us the blue dot in our 2D window, letting us know where that is. So potentially I could add an internal line here. Since I know exactly where that dot is, I'm just gonna create a little line right there so that I could add in some sewing, some free sewing for this example. And just put that there, unfreeze my garment. And I can remove that pin also since it's sewn there. And now I have that attached to exactly where I pinned it up and it's hanging in the same way as my pin was. So it might be a little hard to see because we have um, the same color fabric for it, but I'm just going to copy our fabric really quick and assign this square to our new fabric and change the color. Um, I'll link here to our video about changing colors in Clo since I'm going through this pretty fast. Let's see, there we go. Um, that way, if you have any questions or you wanna learn how to change the colors of a garment, you can do that. So now you can see it a little bit better. So that's just something that we can do. Just an example, one thing that you can do with the pen tool um, and how you can use it to edit your garment, um, how you can use it, like I showed originally, to style our garment by using it 
to give you those points to grab onto and to hold them into the air or by creating this like backdrop too. So there's a lot you can do with the pin tool, um, but I hope this was helpful. Thanks.